So much knowledge is in my language. Like, we say that half our heart is a caribou, that we wouldn't be able to survive without the caribou, and the caribou couldn't survive without us. And um, Kuch'in and caribou we used to be one being, and then we split. And that's why we say that half our heart is a caribou. And this is from oral stories that have been passed down from generation to generation. I've been told by elders that our language comes from the land, so we have to go back to the land to learn our language. And the best ways to learn our language are through song and prayer. Our languages are hidden in the land. We just have to find it. This is really cool, actually, to showcase all these different maps. There's treaties and land claims, indigenous groups and languages, Dinji Jukinji Kuchin. Learning my language has really like helped me mental health-wise. In high school, I really struggled. I was one of those kids that didn't play sports, didn't like talking, <laughs> hated school. Didn't have that many friends, but my language always made me happy. Bunguinzi Shulakat, she Suksal, JC Firth Hagen, and Ubik Eifli, Shritsokai Katan Guichin, Haish Idri Shonihli. My name is Little Martin, JC Firth Hagen. I am born and raised in Anubic Northwest Territories and currently living in Yellowknife. I am the creator of the Guchin language revival campaign, hashtag speak to me, a social media language revitalization initiative. Sharing my love of my language, the importance of languages and uh, encouraging people to speak their language as the Guchin language is one of the most endangered languages in Canada. There are less than 500 speakers and most of our speakers are over the age of 65. I was one of the few people from the Northwest Territories to win the Peter Zosky Award for Literacy for my work with the Gwich'in language. So I received a plaque and this gorgeous uh, hide print. So I was raised by my father, uh, Tia'a Willard Hagen, really traditional, and he always taught me about my grandparents, my great-grandparents, like all the love that's been through my family and my mother, Sylvia Firth, and my stepmother, Mavis Jacobson, like really instilled intergenerational love within me. I learned about the trials and triumphs of my grandparents and really being able to spend time with elders, especially with my dadu, Sarah McLeod Firth, I just found out actually like a while back that my Didu spoke which into me as a baby and I always wanted to learn my language. Um, being taught who I am as an Indigenous woman growing up, that I'm Gwich'in, Dene, Scottish and Norwegian and I was raised strongly in my Gwich'in identity on the land, eating traditional foods learning from elders, and I always wondered, if I'm Gwich'in, why can't I speak my language? And I talked about a bit of how some of our languages are only in museums. It really is like a blessing and a curse. It's an incredible resource to have our items kept by museums, and it's changing, but a lot of times if Indigenous peoples want their items back, they want the remnants of their ancestors back, it's hard. And a lot of these items, I'm not saying they are here, but they were taken in a not, not a right way. Over 300 years ago, the first non-Indigenous people started coming to the Northwest Territories, discovering the land, came across Gwich'in and Inuvaluit peoples, started building up like a partnership. Oh, after like uh, traders and explorers started moving into the NWT, missionaries came. And of course, like they're, yeah. So <laughs> their goal was to Christianize the indigenous peoples. And then by the time my grandma was born, 
Like if she even wanted to learn the Gwich'in language, it was discouraged. It was thought to be old fashioned. Like we speak English now. Like my grandparents, not all of them, but they went to Indian residential school. And then speaking our indigenous languages was prohibited. So at a young age, like this affected me. It's like, of course it's difficult for ever, anyone to hear. And um, I vowed to myself as a young girl that I'm going to become fluent in my language one day. I wanted to be able to speak which in like I speak English. So I'm also wearing my Kai tree or Kai Chan from Guchin woman Mildred Edwards from Aklavik Northwest Territories. And these are called crow boots. Uh, it's very unique and gorgeous, sought after style. This is rabbit fur, geh. When I wear my items, when I wear my jewelry, my adornments, I'm really showing who I am as a Gwich'in woman, as an indigenous woman and person. I would look through the Gwich'in dictionary and actually like pick out words in my language that I wanted to learn. And then I had language classes, maybe like an hour a day, every day. So I would um, meet up with my teacher after class and go through my little list of words that I picked out from the dictionary. And she would go over them with me. And then for about a week, I would go home and maybe spend like 30 minutes to an hour uh, memorizing my list of Gwich'in words. I did this every week for maybe about a year or so or more. After I graduated high school, and I moved to the capital city of Yellowknife for college. And I moved away from my community and I kind of lost my strong ties to learning Gwich'in. I moved away from my grandmother who always sat down and talked with me and taught me. She's the strongest person in her family, our matriarch, so humorous. Being able to spend time with her, learning from her, and ask her questions about my language and watching her sew. And then just like, I have to do this for you, for my family, we've been through so much. So I was interested in creating a hashtag campaign because hashtags are so accessible. You can click on a hashtag on social media and you'll be opened up to all these other posts by people talking about it, creating photos, like submitting selfies, really making their own content and raising awareness, making a conversation. And that's what you're going to find when you use the hashtag speak which into me. It's a community. In the beginning, there was youth from across which in communities talking about the language, even simple words like geh, rabbit, or ashi, snow. At the end of the day, I really wanted to create hashtag speak which into me to give back, to honor our people, and to raise awareness that if we don't speak our languages, who is? Who's gonna pass on our language if it's not being spoken? How is it gonna survive? Like, I love my language and I never want our languages to die, to disappear, and how important language revitalization is. I'm not fluent today. I'm 25, so over 10 years later now, but I'm always learning. I love speaking my language. I speak with others. I teach on social media, and um, I'm getting better. Uh, I've been told by in elders and fluent language speakers, that it could take me my whole life to learn my language, and that's okay too. But you know, like one word a day equals 365 words that you learn a year. It can be hard, it can be difficult, it can be isolating, but it's worth it. Like, you know, your ancestors are proud when you speak your language. Now there's language revitalization movements like across the Arctic and really across Canada and the world. I'm not saying I inspired it all, but it's really an incredible time to be a part of this movement and in language revitalization. It's our community, it's our people, it's our youth that are taking our language and our culture back.